I'm Jasmine, and I'm welcoming back Terry Matthews today. He's the chair of Mitel and CADA national spokesperson. Welcome back to CADA Net TV. I'm delighted to be here, Jasmine. <laughs> it's great. Well, the last time we spoke, you were quite negative about the state of Canada's high-tech sectors. Since then, we've experienced a major global economic crisis. How has this affected Canada's tech sectors, and are we better off or worse off than the last time? Oh, my God. Oh, a recession. I mean, it was really last October when things nosedived. I mean, not just for the tech sector, but uh, I mean, we all know worldwide that that was quite an economic recession and it had a pretty bad effect on the Canadian tech sector. I mean, you know, let's start with the biggest supplier of technology products in Canada and one of our biggest R&D spenders, full stop. Nortel's gone. I mean, how bad it, I mean, it gets pretty bad when the flagship of the fleet goes down. Now, it's true they're not the only flagship. I tend to define flagships as a billion dollar plus company. And, and the reason I define it like that is when a company reaches a billion dollars a year, then you can expect offices in Sydney and Singapore and, and Shanghai and Beijing and Rome and, and so on. So, uh, I mean, Nortel was such a company. Of course, RIM's another company. But, but sadly, we don't have too many flagships like that. So Nortel going down was a terrible thing, uh, I think, for Canada and, and for the flag, you know. Now, the next part of this is that we've had, uh, as I discussed with you last time, we've had a collapse of the VC industry. Uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty bad worldwide. I have lots of friends in the United States and the United Kingdom. And, uh, I mean, there is absolutely no doubt that the VC industry is a little bit, you know, not a little bit, but a lot down. And in Canada, it's like a desert. Now, the good news is that uh, some provincial governments and federal government funding has sort of been aimed to, to help out. But, I mean, it's still pretty much of a desert here that I really don't like. So VC is down. Um, the Nortel factor is very bad for all Canadian companies in technology. Uh, and, and as you can see, I mean, for uh, the news for some companies is, is pretty fatal. You know, they can't get, as an example, credit for needed working capital and so on. And they can't get lease, fund, lease funding for sale of equipment abroad. So the, these factors, the financial industry has been a total mess, uh, as you know. And, then, and, and in, in turn, that's affected some of our best uh, high growth companies. So, so for me, it's been a it's pretty, bad, pretty bad scenario. So then, do you see new opportunities on the horizon for Canada's tech industries, and particularly for the IT and telecom area that you've been focusing on? Yeah, no, I don't know. That's my area. Is the the sort of network and application side? That's my area, and and certainly uh, since we last spoke uh, in the last twelve months, notwithstanding recession effects and so on, there has been dramatic upside in some areas, areas that I'm personally involved in. Uh, as an example, broadband just broadband generally, whether that means wire or optics or satellite, and, but in particular wireless. You know, the whole world of what you would call mobile telephony, mobile smartphones, right. has absolutely shot up. Uh, and, and there is about to be a war that starts, I know it's a funny word, a war, you know, but starting next year in this whole industry of broadband, and in particular wireless, mobile, there is a war about to start for those companies that have lots of customers saying to new entrants, you're not taking my clients away. And they, be, they begin to dramatically increase facilities in two areas, a thing called LTE, long-term evolution, another thing called WiMAX, uh, and, and anything that provides broadband wireless facilities for end users into smartphones, multimedia environments, of course, that's been characterized by a Canadian company, uh, RIM, and the BlackBerry, very, very famous product. I mean, all around the world, that's what I would call a real Canadian flagship. And then, of course, iPhone, which is taking market share. All of these things are relatively recent. You know, if you take a look at iPhone, if you take a look at the, the RIM products, they're all relatively recent. They certainly weren't here 10 years ago, seven years ago, beginning to take place but now under full swing towards smartphones, giving you broadband capability. So anything associated with wireless broadband is dramatically going up. Anything associated with growth of broadband generally, as an example, um, devices that go up to 100 gigabits now, which has been unheard of, you know. So, so the amount of bandwidth in the core network and the access network 
There are many Canadian companies in that area, and I'm pleased to say that they are doing really well. Some of them with uh, share prices going up, some of them attracting investment. So it's, it's, it's not a total desert in the scene, but it's, it's still pretty bad. And, and we can do a hell of a lot more in this country to improve the environment, to grow really successful companies in that sector. Of course. Are there specific issues that you believe that governments need to tackle quickly if Canada's tech sector companies are to come out of this recession with a fighting chance for the future? Well, there's a, there's a lot the government could do. If I was king, there'd be quite a few things I'd do. <laughs> I mean, the, uh, the tax credits, for instance, I think it could be dramatically upgraded and improved. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's just sadly not, not in keeping with the today environment. And some countries are doing much better than Canada encouraging technology firms. Uh, specifically France, as an example, is a, is a very good one, with new legislation encouraging young companies to grow. You know, it's not very difficult to understand that a young company of, let's say, 10, 20, 30, 40, even 100 people, it's easier to grow them to a doubling and a trebling and so on than taking a, a 10,000 person company and having it grow to 20 or 30,000, right? right? So, and, and we have lots and lots of what I would call small startup companies desperately needing help, and the help isn't exactly a big burden on the government in my view. So some of the things that I see could be improved, uh, you know, a really good example for me would be what we call SADI, the strategic, uh, initiative to provide the aerospace and defense industry matching funds in R&D. I believe that could be expanded to include the sector, certainly the technology sector, not just aerospace defense. I think that could have a, like a dramatic impact on the success of our companies. I think the other thing is IRUP funding. The government put in a, you know, something like a $200 million addition to IRAP. Uh, over a two-year program. I mean, it, it should be permanent. And in any event, it's not enough. And the, the IRAP program run by NRC, it's a terrific program. It's been there for decades. It works really well. They have the right staff to select the right companies to invest in. We should just do more of it because it is successful. And it allows us across the country to grow companies in an area where, where frankly, you know, a company that's 10 years old in this technology uh, arena, uh, if they don't come up with new products, they're out of it. I mean, things are changing so rapidly on the technology front, whether it's the processing side, the bandwidth availability side, the features, functions, applications, content is another one. I mean, all of these areas, it's a sea change compared to just 10 years ago. Um, in my case, going after unified communications, uh, with a company called Mitel that I started up in 1972. I mean, we've spent hundreds of millions of dollars changing that over. And boom, here it is taking market share and so on around the planet. So it can be done. It's not that it can't be done. So there's the SR&D uh, SR stuff. Um, there's the, uh, the uh, SADI program, which I think matching funds could be uh, dramatically improved. There's IRAP funding, definitely that needs to, uh, to be addressed in my view. And the other thing is government procurement and government R&D spending. You know, uh, why can't we have a thing similar to the US where a test bed is set up for Canadian companies to just show their wares, show their technology? Because in, you know, in every country, governments, provincial and federal, state and federal, they are the biggest buyers by far. And it's time that we gave our companies an opportunity to move into a test bed, show their wares, demonstrate what they can do, and be, be seen in a better light. I mean, that's the kind of thing that would be very meaningful in my view. Right. Well, thank you for your time then. Oh, it's my pleasure.